Hello everybody. I hope all of y'all are having a good day today. Um, I had mentioned the other day uh, in one of my videos that uh, I was going to do a, um, a video on the five caves uh, that are in the Bible. Now, if I, if I tried to do one video and, and translating every story of cave story in the Bible from the Hebrew and the Greek and things like that, it, 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 it'd be hours long. So what I'm doing today is just something quick and easy, okay? Remember, Jesus said that his words are spirit. So if anyone has the mind of Christ, the language that you speak will be a spiritual language, all right? And, and people that don't have the spirit cannot understand the spiritual language. What you have to do when you look at the five caves in the Bible is remember the five books of the Torah, the law, okay? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuter Numbers, Deuteronomy, okay? That was the law. That was the five. That's why the lady at the well had five husbands. The rich man and Lazarus, the rich man had five brothers. It was the five foolish virgins, the five wise virgins, David picked up five stones to go after Goliath, okay? The five always represents the law, the Torah, all right? And it also represents grace as well and the five wounds that Jesus had on the cross. I, I look back at my journey before I knew God, before I come to know God and to come into his presence, all right? I remember being stripped away, all right? Everything about me, every every little route that I thought I could take to escape, you know, I would try to run here, I would try to run there, and, and it's like everything was being blocked off, all right? Just like the wounds on the cross. Jesus' hands were nailed, his feet were nailed, okay? And then he was finally pierced in the side. But his hands and his feet, that means he could no longer work all right? He couldn't do anything. All right? If you remember, he was on Golgotha, the place of the skull. So I remember it was like, you know, it was like I was crucified. And it's written, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. I have been crucified with Christ. So if you've gone on this journey, you have experienced that. Every, every way of escape has been taken away from you until you turn deep within yourself, all right? Because the kingdom of heaven is there, and that's where you will find the truth, and that's where you will finally find peace. Remember, Jesus uh, said in Matthew chapter 21, he said, this place, meaning the temple of God, and remember, we are the temple of God now. Jesus is speaking a spiritual language here. He said, this place is supposed to be a place of prayer, but you guys have made it a den of thieves. All right, and if you look at that word for prayer in the Strong's there, it means a, a, a place where you communicate with God. And the more you communicate and listen to his voice and his prompting, the more faith that is embirthed in you. Divine faith, God-given faith, not human faith, because human faith is worthless. But he said, you've made it a den of thieves. And remember, there's the two thieves on the cross, all right? It's Golgotha, the place of the skull. It's your skull. It's my skull. It's all of our skulls, okay? And the accuser, the devil, he comes to steal, he's a thief, kill, and destroy. You see, the word devil means accuser. And see, we are our worst enemies. Our carnal self is our worst enemies, our worst accusers. That's where we tell ourselves, you know, hey, this isn't good enough. I need to do the works of the law to make God happy. I need to do all these things outside of myself to make God happy. We're our, our own accuser. We tell ourselves that what we have, what we had in the garden originally, it wasn't good enough. We gotta do something more. You know, in reality, the only thing we have to do is just seek His presence, God's presence. That's what happened to me. The moment I came into the presence of God, 
everything changed. Now this part here is gonna be hard for a lot of those Bible literalists to understand, okay? Because there's been so many stories and videos and movies made about the apocalypse and, and end times and stuff like that. And people read in Revelation 6, where the kings and princes and, and rich and poor and all them hide in caves to escape the presence of the one who sits on the throne. There's a thousand videos right now, people doing videos about those deep underground military bases, dumb bases and stuff, and, and all these things. And they're like, see them people getting them caves ready so they can hide from God when he comes here in the clouds and he's killing everybody and it's just chaos and Armageddon and all that stuff. Remember, book of Revelations was a vision given to John. And John is telling you of things he's seen in the spirit, a spiritual language. So you have to look at this as like everything is about our temple. We are the temple of God, all right? And we have to get beyond ourselves, the two thieves, the accusers, all right? <clears throat> there are people out there, remember it's written about they, that you will fear death no more. So once you come to know God, you'll fear death no more. But, but speaking about a dying to yourself, all right? And see those, those rich men and all that stuff, and, and if, even ordinary people. The thought of dying to yourself and losing your life to gain life, you know, it's like, well, I want to pursue this. I want to be a doctor or a lawyer. I want to be a famous singer or this or that. But if I give up my life, if I give up everything for Christ, what you know that then he's going to give me this other life that's not going to have anything to do with that or he, he may or he may not but the fear of dying to yourself and the things you want was too much for a lot of those people to bear so you look at revelation 6 like they will hide from his presence and where is his presence it's within us all right the one who sits on the throne and his throne is right here all right, so they hide in their own prison, in their cave, and they become a prisoner of their own mind, a prisoner of their own desires, all right? To have their life over real life. Remember, this is eternal life, to know the one true God and the one he sent, Jesus Christ, and that's when you receive Zoe, real life. But there's people that are afraid of that, so they hide from his presence. And they'll hide from his presence with doctrines of men and things like that. Anything to avoid giving up their life, all right? And having Christ raise up and rule and reign within them. One of my favorite scriptures is in 1 Kings. And that is when, that is when Elijah, you know, God, God says, you know, look outside, you know, and there's, there's the wind, you know, but... The, God was not in the wind and the earthquake and the fire. And God was not in those, you know. And then he hears that still, small voice. All right? I love that. I love that, that scripture because I remember the night, that, that word still in the Strong's, that the, it, it means to be quiet. Remember, it, it, it's, it's written, be still and know that I am God. But the word small there means a whisper. And I remember on June 14th of 2012, I heard it two times. I heard that whisper. It was crystal clear, but the first time it was kind of muddled up by all this fight, the battle going on within me. But I heard it. It was the most beautiful voice in the world from deep within me saying, call out to Jesus. It was just like a whisper though, but it was beautiful. And it was crystal clear, especially the second time. But, but Elijah is in a cave, all right? And, and the cave is his mind, the darkness within himself, all right? The Hindus call it the cave of Brahma, all right? But it's within himself, okay? And God was telling him, you know, look, it's not in the winds, not in the fire, it's not in the earthquake. But it's in that still, small voice, that voice from within him. And that word cave... It also means to be made bare, to be made naked. And you remember when Adam and Eve, the two thieves, told God, they said, we were naked, and God said, who told you that you were naked? 
You see, they told themselves they were naked. All right, they were in a cave, that darkness. Remember, come out of the dark into the light. But Elijah wraps his face, his, his face in the mantle is what it was called. But that word wrap there means to envelop. All right, and, and to wrap it with the cloak, meaning God's covering, no longer naked. All right, but he's enveloped with it. And, and I remember 6, 14, 20, 12, it was like, God stepped down out of heaven and just enveloped me with this love. It was like just, I was cocooned in it. It's still the most amazing, profound moment in my life. It changed me forever. And that's what he's doing here. He is clothing himself in Christ, in that love, okay? And then what does he do? He goes out. God says, go out. All right, and that word in the Strong's Hebrew it means to go out, but it also means to be born. Born again, okay, into the new life. But he went out of the entrance. And that word for entrance in the Strong's Hebrew means a gateway. The gateway to where? All right? The kingdom of God is within us, all right? So if you remember when Jacob was asleep, had his head on the rock. Remember, that represents how the temple, the Jewish temple was laid out. They just did a counterfeit. You know, they made it a physical place instead of the human body. All right? but, but he was laying there, and whenever he woke up from his dream, he said, surely this is the gateway to heaven. I mean, right here, you got to go deep within yourself. Remember in First Kings there with Elijah, it's like he, God wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the earthquake. And in Luke, Jesus said, people will say, look here, look there. You know, the kingdom is there. It's here. He was telling the Pharisees that. And he said, but it's not. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. All right? The kingdom of God is within you. That's where true peace is. All right? Don't let the thief steal your crown. I love you all. God bless.